Today I'm going to show you how a hydraulic power steering rack works in your car. Now here we've got the entire power steering system laid out here from the vehicle. We have the steering column, the power steering pump, the reservoir, the hydraulic lines, and of course the steering rack. Now the purpose of the steering system is to take rotational motion from the driver's input to the steering column and turn it into translational motion which will then turn the wheel. You can see when I turn the input shaft to the right that it actually pushes the left tie rod outward which will correspond to a right turning wheel. Now the other aspect of the system is the power steering assist system which allows you to steer a 3,000 pound vehicle with very minimal steering effort. We have the power steering pump that provides hydraulic pressure over here, we have its reservoir over here and then we have all of these hydraulic lines that goes into the steering rack. So here we're going to have a look at the hydraulic circuit in the power steering system. We have the power steering reservoir that feeds through this green line to the power steering pump. The fluid is then pressurized through this purple line here where it then goes to the rotary valve. The rotary valve is going to determine if the pressure is to be sent out on the right side or the left side of the rack piston according to the steering angle. The fluid will then return back out through this orange line here to the reservoir to be cycled around again. Here we have the high pressure line that connects to the power steering pump over here and provides high pressure fluid to the steering rack over here. We've got the return line that goes over to the reservoir and the reservoir then in turn feeds back the power steering pump for a closed loop circuit. On the purposes of this video, we're gonna be focusing on the steering rack. So let's use my flare wrench here and remove the steering lines. Now this video is about to get messy, so I've got my wife's old pants here, my brother's old undershirt, a couple of freshly stolen underwears here, and an old sock. Viewer discretion is strongly advised. Pull off that hose, tap up any mess. Now I'll just use a flare wrench to remove the high pressure line. <clears throat> and I can remove this line and there's probably some fluid left in these lines here. Just drain those out. So here we've got the entire steering rack separated. We can take a look at some of the components including the cylinder or rack housing assembly. We have the inner and outer tie rods on either side with their bellow boots. We have these pressure lines here that go to either side to the piston inside. We have the mounting points here where it mounted to the subframe. We have the pinion gear inside here and the rotary valve that controls the hydraulic. Now if we take a look at how the steering rack works, inside of this cylinder we have a piston that moves from side to side with the rack. And depending on which line you apply pressure to, the piston is going to move in the opposite direction. Now what controls that is the rotary valve which takes high pressure fluid and depending on which direction you're moving the pinion gear, it'll then supply high pressure to the appropriate side to give you that steering assist. Now in order to get a closer look, I need to start disassembling the steering rack here by removing these lines. The other rags are already full of fluids so I'm going to come with my wife's pants here and wipe this place up. Now at the end of the rack we have the inner tie rod which pivots inside of this boot over here because of suspension movements while you're driving down the road. I'm going to remove the zip tie here so we can remove this boot and then I'll just pull back on this boot here and you can see the inner tie rod where it joins to the steering rack. Alright, I got my big old wrench on there. You can see how much force this takes to wind off. So I've got the steering rack mounted here so I can get enough leverage to knock this inner tie rod loose. Oh. And now I'm going to remove the inner tie rod from the steering rack. Oh, thanks wife. You're welcome. And remove that inner tie rod. Now the steering rack has two main components, the rack cylinder itself as well as the pinion gear where it enters the rack at this angle. And the pinion itself has this big bolt that provides a little bit of tension on that gear. Now at the top here we have the control valve that's held on by these two bolts that control the hydraulic portion of the circuit. So I'll just loosen up this big bolt here so we can release the tension from the pinion. And I'll remove this cap here. And inside you can see there's a spring. Just use my wife's old pants here to wipe this guy up here. And inside of here there's this little seat that presses up against the rack cylinder, but I can't seem to get it out. Next up I'm going to remove the control valve assembly that's held on by these two bolts here. These are E-Torx 8 bolts and the other one on this side. And now I'm going to remove the control valve and the pinion. So you can see the control valve assembly that goes around the input shaft to the pinion gear. The pinion gear itself is a helical gear and it interfaces with the straight cut gear on the steering rack. Now this steering rack and pinion gear is full of grease so I'm just going to use a freshly stolen piece of my brother's underwear and blast it clean. I'm going to beat off this input shaft here. All right, now I'm going to beat on the shaft here. Now the heart of the power steering system is the rotary valve and it's responsible for directing fluid on either side of the steering rack according to the input from the driver. Now how this works is we've got this housing, it's got a seal on the top here and on the inside there there's a bearing. There's also a bearing for the bottom side over here that allows this pinion to rotate nice and smoothly. Now inside of this housing we've got the high pressure and low pressure lines that correlate to two little holes on the inside there, low pressure on the bottom and the high pressure line at the top here. You've also got these two other lines that go to either side of the steering rack, either left or right, and that correlates to these two holes inside of here 
left and right. Now when the driver wants to make a turn, the input shaft here has a torsion beam on the inside here that will redirect high pressure fluid from the inside here over to the appropriate hole. So for example, if you want to turn left, it will redirect the high pressure fluid over to this hole here. It will then go over to the steering rack, completed circuit, and bring return fluid through this hole over here that will then be redirected back through this hole over here then into the housing and back to the reservoir. Now when the steering wheel is in the neutral position and not being turned, the high pressure fluid is simply sent back through the reservoir, completing the hydraulic circuit. Now the rotary valve here, we have the spool and it could come off, but it seems like that peg there is preventing it from coming off. So I might have to drill that out. I can pull off the spool valve here. So here we have the spool valve. Now in the neutral position, the input doesn't move. But when the steering wheel is turned, it only has to move a very slight amount, just a few degrees, in order to redirect fluid to that hole over there. And that's where this torsion bar comes into play. You can see on the input shaft here, as I turn it to one direction, it slightly moves by maybe one or two degrees, and that's enough to redirect fluid from here over to here to complete the hydraulic circuit. And the same thing happens when I move it in the opposite direction. Now once I've turned past those two or three degrees, the steering actually locks and that's what's going to provide a direct linkage between the input and output shaft for manual power steering in case the power steering fails. I'm going to grind this key out so I can pull out the torsion beam. I'm just going to knock out the guts of this bearing here. So now this input shaft here is made of three different pieces. We've got the torsion bar down the middle. It's actually attached to this input shaft over here. And this input shaft slides in to this pinion gear. Now I'm going to chop off the tip of this input shaft to see if I can free this valve. And we got that nice and free there. We should just pop right out. See, we've got the torsion beam over here and the input shaft side. And that's really, really hot. Ow! So with the torsion rod separated from the input shaft here, I can remove it. And you can see just how thin that little torsion rod is. And that's what provides the resistance when this valve rotates. The high pressure fluid is going to sit in this little channel over here and when this rotates very slightly it's going to align with the other two holes over here, either the left one or the right one and channel that high pressure fluid out to that side of the cylinder on the rack accordingly. Now because the torsion beam is kind of like a spring, there's a self-centering effect as long as there's no input from the driver relative to the wheels. Now inside of the input shaft there's this rectangular shape that correlates to a rectangular shape on the pinion gear. Now when these two plug together this is actually a little bit smaller and that's what allows for a little bit of that free rotational play to activate this rotary valve before taking over manual steering. And now we're back to the steering rack and you can see where that pinion actually interfaces with the steering rack over here. It's got a lot of grease on it and that's because it needs to be well lubricated over the service life of this rack. I'm going to give this rack a little push here. Whoa. Sorry I sprayed my wife. Ah. I've got the rack bolted up here and I'm just going to use this crescent wrench to break this seal loose. Because this nut rounded off using this wrench, I'm going to have to use another wrench to get it off. And with the end cap removed, you can see there's actually a seal on the inside here, as well as that fastener that holds the end side together. But now that that's off, I can actually remove the entire rack. There we go. Now here we've got the piston located on the rack, and it normally sits in between these two valves here, where fluid pressure can either push on either side to give you power assist. Now on the end here we have the threads for the inner tie rod and on the driver's side of the rack we have the straight cut gears for the helical gear on the pinion to turn against. Now some steering racks have a variable ratio for different steering feel. In the middle the tooth will be spaced further apart for a very easy turn in while on the outside the teeth will be closely spaced for a very quick steering feel near the end. Now taking a look inside of the rack you can see that adjuster that had the spring on it it actually pushes against the rack to give it a little bit of tension. Now also on the rack are these two bushings that mount to the subframe. They also have to resist the side to side motion of the wheels and therefore sometimes they can wear out and cause sloppy steering. Now the piston operates only between these two ports here. Further past that there's a seal that seals off the hydraulic chamber from the chamber that has the gears on the pinion side. And you can see that seal further down inside of there. Now when your steering rack is leaking it's actually the seal on either end of the hydraulic tube that's leaking hydraulic fluid out into the steering boots. Now that fluid is going to burn through rubber really easily and eat up these boots causing a leak. Now the tie rods connect to the end of the steering rack and have this little adjustment here to align the toe angle of the wheels. Now there's two ball joints, one on the inner and outer, that are subjected to wear as your vehicle ages. To get a better look at that ball socket attachment, I'm going to cut it off. And with that, I'm going to remove this inner tie rod here. You can see the ball socket, and inside of here, you can see we have the housing and a plastic bearing. Now while this moves up and down with the suspension, it also moves in and out with the steering 
and that could cause wear on these bearings over time, creating a little bit of play. Now I'm going to chop open this little ball joint on the outer tie rod. And we'll see what's inside. You can see that this ball set actually rotates inside of this housing here. And once again, because of suspension travel, it's going to wear out over time. And that's pretty much all the components that go into making the steering rack on your car work. Make sure you follow me on Instagram for more behind the scenes footage and subscribe for more videos just like this one. Here's how to check if your steering rack seals are good. Let's put your finger on here and bounce it up and down. And if it holds air, it's good.